A warm welcome to the WISIS Forum 2018. I'm joined today by our WISIS Action Line facilitators who represent different UN agencies and help facilitate the WISIS Action Lines, ensuring the alignment between the WISIS Action Lines and SDGs. The topic for today's discussion is moving towards resilient and sustainable societies. I have here with me today Ms. Sasha Rubel, who represents UNESCO. UNESCO, rep UNESCO facilitates several VISIS action lines. Hours. And uh, what are the key actions that UNESCO takes in the area of uh, resilient and sustainable societies? Thank you, Ditanjali. Uh, as facilitator of six action lines for the WISIS process and co-organizer of the WISIS forum, UNESCO has really focused on mainstreaming our work in support of ICTs for sustainable development around the four pillars of our concept of knowledge societies. And this with the intention, really, of centralizing the role of knowledge societies in ensuring sustainable and resilient communities. And this concept of knowledge societies is built around four principal axes. One is freedom of expression, the other is access to information, the third is cultural and linguistic diversity, and the fourth is universal and quality education for all. So when you look concretely at the work that we're doing in facilitating these six action lines, they're based around these four pillars and also on our work on uh, ethics of the information society, promoting a new concept that UNESCO has developed with our partners on internet universality, which is based around the idea that the internet has to to be rights-based, open, accessible to all, and multi-stakeholder. So our work both at the policy level and the programmatic level, uh, both globally and with our field offices around the world, is focused in mainstreaming these concepts of knowledge society and internet universality in our work across all fields of the six action lines that we coordinate and beyond. Thank you very much, Sasha. Include, in, in fact, you know, inclusion and access uh, for all is extremely crucial for all the uh, business action lines to be implemented. Thank you very much. Uh, I have here with me today also uh, the action line focal point of C5, cybersecurity. Uh, ITU is the lead facilitator of this action line. Uh, Pritam, can you please uh, share with us some actions that ITU is taking in the area of uh, resilient and uh, sustainable society vis-a-vis -vis cyber security? Uh, thank you, Gitanjali. Uh, this year is a milestone year for ITU and cybersecurity for several different reasons. First of all, it's of course the 20th <coughs> year of the anniversary uh, for the call for the uh, VISIS uh, summit. Uh, it happened in our plenipotentiary conference in Minneapolis in 98. It's the 15th year of the Geneva Plan of Action where Action Line C5 was formulated. Uh, it's also the 10th year since, uh, you know, as the sole facilitator of Action Line C5, uh, ITU's uh, high-level expert group came out with its landmark report, uh, which also specified and you know, elaborated on the global cybersecurity agenda, which is a global framework for action on cybersecurity. It's also the 10th year of the Child Online Protection Initiative, which is an initiative which was launched in 2008 to empower uh, children uh, and protect children online. So uh, under this framework, ITU has had significant activities going on. You know, we obviously as a UN agency act as a platform for international dialogue. We also do significant work on uh, capacity building, uh, you know, uh, for example, establishing national certs. Uh, helping countries develop their own national strategies, you know, the Global Cyber Security Index. We also have an entire uh, group uh, working on developing standards for cyber security. We have the Child Online Protection Initiative. So it's, it's a, you know, it, there's a lot of activities happening and we obviously do it while collaborating with a lot of partners. It's a multi-stakeholder initiative. It's a member states, it's our uh, private sector members, civil society, governments. So we have a very rich collaboration going on. Thank you. Thank you, Preetam. You highlighted a crucial point of uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships uh, to enable the success of implementation of any action line. <clears throat> I have here with me Mr. Marco Biso. Hi. Hello. He is the uh, action line focal point for uh, C6 and uh, C2, which is ICT infrastructure and enabling environment. Uh, Marco, can you please uh, share some, uh, you know, implementation success stories and any action from the ground that's happening in this area in the ITU? Sure. Hello, everyone. Hello, Gitanjali. So, the, as you said, 
ITU is a sole facilitator for Extra Line C2 and Extra Line C6, which from my perspective, from our perspective, are two of the most uh, significant and uh, important uh, extra lines because they are, uh, let's say, en encompasses the underpinning elements of uh, any kind of, uh, uh, let's say, sustainable and resilient society, which is, the, of course, the ICT infrastructure, which is underpinning all the services that nowadays uh, citizens are using, uh, starting from e-governments into e-education, uh, e-agriculture, uh, and, and even uh, going into the allocation of the spectrum, which is uh, one of the fundamental elements in order for the citizens to use their uh, let's say mobile services, right? And uh, C6 is more related to the regulations, more related to the enabling environment in the sense of uh, putting in place those uh, policy capabilities that any country is in need in order to articulate better uh, how the ICT environment should operate and should work. Now, I'm not going in detail in what the ITU is doing, but uh, there is, uh, of course, a huge amount of work that ITU is undertaking together with the other agencies from the standard setting uh, part into the, let's say, uh, projects and activities to be rolled on the ground. And uh, we are doing a, a vast amount of work in uh, facilitating the, uh, let's say, uh, the, the development of those capabilities. But uh, the main uh, objective that we have, which is linked, of course, to the Sustainable Development Goal, is to actually try to uh, uh, bridge, uh, to, let's say, reduce the digital divide. Because still, after all these years of work by ITU and by all the other intergovernmental organizations and the ICT community at large, we still have a massive amount of population which is not connected. We are talking about 4 billion people. So um, what we are trying to do is to facilitate those kind of, uh, let's say, process which encompasses, you know, the resource mobilization part, the investment from private sector, the, uh, uh, let's say, commitment and engaging of an engagement of, of the government in order to, let's say, raise awareness on the importance of having, let's say, ICT infrastructure in place, having an enabling environment in place, having in place, uh, let's say, that mindset that would enable governments to understand the importance of, uh, of, of the ICT in the, in, the, in the, let's say, social and economic ecosystem, if you want. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, in fact, uh, very important action lines for ensuring that the uh, connecting the disconnected and uh, important to have innovation in ICT infrastructure, but also in ICT policies. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, I have here with me also Ms. Maritza, and she uh, helps facilitate the WISIS action line C7 on e-environment. Uh, uh, so, Maritza, what is the role of disaster management in particular, you know, in uh, building uh, resilient and sustainable societies? Well, thank you, Gitanjali. We all here know that information and communication technologies play a critical role when we talk about disaster management activities and disaster risk reduction. ICTs are key when we talk about preparing for and respond to disasters, as well as in monitoring the environment, establishing early warning and monitoring systems. ITU is very much involved in all phases of disaster management. Uh, for example, in preparedness, uh, we help countries to establish, develop and design and establish a national emergency telecommunication plans and also, for example, uh, a, a providing guidance on countries on, on, on finding what risks they are affected by and also analyzing which uh, measures can be taken to reduce vulnerability of, of, of the country and also of communities. Uh, we have just concluded uh, the establishment of two uh, early warning systems in Zambia which will help these communities to be more resilient and sustainable. And uh, early warning systems are key, and I am going to uh, give, a, or WMO is going to give more information about early warning systems. Thank you very much. Uh, early warning systems uh, and disaster management, crucial for uh, resilient societies. Uh, our last speaker is uh, Neil.
He represents the WMO that co-facilitates co the WISIS Action Line C7 on e-environment. Neil, what contribution does WMO make and what is the role of uh, emergency uh, systems in this? Thank you. Uh, the World Meteorological Organization is supporting its uh, national meteorological and hydrological services to uh, uh, improve their multi-hazard early warning system capabilities uh, with the ability to bring in new data from uh, monitoring and forecasting systems as well as um, the way to communicate that information out to the communities um, in, in those situations. So um, in, in respect to that, it's not just about WMO's role in, in isolation. We work closely with uh, ITU to get uh, the information into the MET services as well as get the messages uh, out, out to the community. And so we've developed, a, uh, in conjunction with the ITU, a checklist uh, on multi-hazard early warning system implementation, uh, which covers disaster risk uh, exposure analysis as well as the forecasting and uh, monitoring in the, of those uh, disasters. The, um, the communication out to the community, as well as ed educating and, 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 and informing the community on how to respond to those, um, th those disasters. So uh, those checklists are a guide for national institutions as well as global institutions to, uh, to develop those multi-hazard early warning systems a lot further. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, as you can see, the UN family is working as one to ensure that the WISIS action lines play a crucial role in achieving the sustainable development goals. Thank you very much and we look forward to welcoming you next year to the WISIS Forum 2019.